Hello, and welcome once again to Apex Instant Tips, episode 120, brought to you every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm your host, Anton. Uh, today, we have with us a very special guest. Welcome, Hayden. Always great to be here, Anton. And uh, uh, once again, I think we have a great tip for our audience. Yeah, you know, and um, Mishka came on last week to talk about uh, template components and, um, and, and to, to plug the template component challenge by MTAG. Um, and I think that's great. And today's tip is a little bit related um, in that so it, it, what we're, we're going to build a template component, but it will not be um, eligible for uh, Mishka's challenge. Right. And I say maybe not eligible. It, it probably wouldn't be interesting for Mishka's challenge. However, um, and so here is the URL to the challenge. Um, a lot of great information on template components uh, is on John Dixon's blog. He has a recent blog post. Um, we'll put that link in as well. This gives you a lot of great things about how to write template components. But our use case today is a little specific. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, but but a different a different take on how why you might want to use a template component than the the, the ones that, that have been promoted, which is, you know, template components give you a way to reuse these templates in lots and lots of places, that kind of thing. But there's another reason to use them as well. And it answers the age old question of what can you do with template components in five minutes? <laughs> Excellent. Well, let's share your screen and uh, see what we can find out. Yeah. So uh, if you share my screen, uh, I thought we'd start with a, a relatable situation. So let me go ahead and start my timer. So uh, what I have here in this column is something that I trust most of our viewers will have seen before, which is um, some HTML, an HTML expression uh, that has a class that um, selectively hides and shows it and then passes in a primary key. Yes. Uh, any thoughts on this, Anton? Yeah, you know, a few things. Um, one is the, the class that selectively hides and shows it probably could be a template directive, but that would make this thing even more complicated. Um, yeah. You know, and, and it's already a fair amount of code to have sort of buried in this location. And one of my pet peeves is the bigger and bigger this box gets more and more code. If I do something that changes the alias of this column. Yeah, so if I were to come back here, and rename um, this button to something else, uh, and then it, it would uh, get rid of everything. Oh, everything the code would be gone, right? Exactly. Yeah. So that would be unfortunate. So uh, let's um, uh, ensure this code against such accidents and create a template component. So I'm going to copy this HTML, and I'm going to navigate back to plugins. I'm going to create a plugin from scratch, and uh, it defaults to Tembo component, and let's call this uh, button one. And uh, par uh, I'm gonna choose partial here because partial um, references the interactive reporter, which I'm using. And I'm gonna just gonna replace all of this code with this, which I copied and pasted, and cr click create plugin. So automatically upon hitting create plugin, the um, the code here is extracted into these proposed settings. Um, I'm actually going to go a step further. I don't like having to use a class to show and hide the button, so I'm actually going to use a temple directive. Um, and so the temple directive, uh, um, uh, let me just uh, make sure I have it right. Yeah, so uh, the logic I want to use is if the phone number field is not null, so that's question mark phone number, then display this. Otherwise, don't display anything at all. Easy enough. Right. I'm going to hit apply changes. I definitely like that better than the class as well. I've always done the class, but I think that's great. Yeah. And then uh, let's just clean this up a bit. So I need to synchronize from template again. And I'm going to get rid of this one because I'm no longer using it. And uh, let's go ahead and. Uh, make both of these required. Excellent. And with plenty of time to spare, I now come back here.
and I'm going to pick my the button I've just created. And uh, it, it is now demanding that I supply the two fields that I specified. So the customer ID and the phone number. Excellent. And there it is. And it works exactly the way as the previous one. And now it's uh, not only have I um, uh, protected my code against the possibility of accidentally getting rid of it, uh, by changing the column alias, but also I've enhanced the codes to include temple directives. Yeah, that's great. Um, and you know, I have a little bit of a, a sideline tip that um, that goes along with these template directives that I think is uh, at least interesting. So let's try and squeeze in that secondary tip here as well. Yes. Uh, do you want to share your screen for that purpose? Let me do that. Um, so um, I figured out recently that you can you can actually call different template directives so if, or different um, com template components. If you have large template components and you've got some reason to, to use different ones, you can do a case expression. You can say, well, when my H column is hello, use the hello template component. And when my H component is goodbye, use the goodbye template component, which mm -hmm. is just, you know, it's just a silly little thing. But what happens is if I run this, um, you can see I, I've got my hello does hello Anton and goodbye does goodbye Joe. So all in the same, so somehow two template components have been combined together in the same column. In the same column, right. Which I think can be really powerful, um, especially if you have a bunch of template components and you might use them for different reasons. Uh, an interesting take on it. So a couple of little things uh, related to template components that maybe unusual use cases, but things that I think people can relate to. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that is it for the five minute timer, just we, in case. You yeah, know. I think we made, um, we made it. Uh, we don't always make it in our five minutes, but I think today yeah. we did two, two little things. Um, yeah, well, I, I, we made it in um, good time and I hope people are impressed with how uh, simple it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, Template components can become inc incredibly complex, but if you can break them into smaller pieces like this, I think it, it helps a lot. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I have a wisdom of the week, but if you just came in for uh, five minutes, you can beat it now. Send a letter to your mom, tell her about the show. Um, make sure you include the full URL in that letter so she can type it in one character at a time. <laughs> um, uh, so my wisdom of the week is um, about uh, about writing PL SQL packages and, um, and, and, a, and a piece of wisdom that I, I really love, and that's provide an example for every procedure in your package spec. I'm gonna start with a little bit of, of an example. Um, so um, in the, the Apex um, SQL workshop, you can create a package. And if you do that, you create a package here, you can say AIT 120, example, um, you can include sample code. If you do that, you get this sample code. And I'm, so I'll create this package. And I'm going to show one thing that I love about it. I love that in the body, all of the public ones, all, the only comment about a procedure is see the specification. And I think that's exactly the right thing to do for any public one, because that's the, the people using this package, this procedure, are going to be looking at the specification. That's where it belongs. So let's go back to the specification. Um, and I've, I've done this now for, for years and years. This is like my, my pet peeve that I just want that over here. So over here, we have comment about procedure. Mm -hmm. Real wisdom of the week is that every procedure should have this example. And then that example could look something like this. Um, so here we have begin exactly how to use that and an end. Right. And yep. the thing about this is, well, I do a lot of code reviews, a lot of code reviews. And when I see this, I'm pretty confident that the person that wrote this package actually ran this at least once. Yep. I mean, you should be testing your code, right? If in order to test your code, you at least have to run it once. So if you're going to type it once, you might as well save 
everybody else from having to type it once. They can just copy it and paste it into their code. Right? Obviously, you might want more information. This has a whole you know, list of the parameters and all those kinds of things. But at, a, at an absolute minimum, make it so that I, the next person to use this code, don't have to type it again. I can just copy it and paste it. Um, Absolutely. And when, um, uh, and it's often the case that um, the uh, that the example code provides a lot of necessary context to help you sort of understand what is used for. So, uh, for example, if your example code references colon p sixty five ID, then then you know this is used in an Apex context to someone. Exactly. I think that that that's a great when when you anticipate it would be used in Apex if that's the the, the most common use case. Put in something just like that, um, just like you said. Um, so I think it, I think this this I'll say requirement for all package specs um, should just be something across the board. Everybody should do it. So, so it does look like your um, your example code is missing comments, so it might it would fail. But uh, uh, my example code is missing. I'm sorry. So, so on line twenty four, I should have a comment there now. A comma. Oh, it should. Look at that. It should have a comma there, and it should have a comma there. This is this is actually code that's in process right now, um, sure. and the person that's working on this code, I think, is is watching the show. Um, and I right before the show, I sent him a note saying it was incomplete. Uh, so uh, so hopefully, this person that's working on this code right now uh, will will capture these uh, uh, these comments. So, um, but absolutely, those those are missing, and another comma here as well, right? All the way down, though. All the way down. So, um, all right. Well, Hayden, that is all I have. I'm out for the next couple of weeks. Um, so, I think people will have a couple of weeks off. Get some Fridays, Friday lunchtime. I, uh, I think people uh, need a little bit, bit of a break from us. So, um, uh, we can all get a little bit of rest. All right. Well, both of our users will be have to, happy. To, <laughs> our, both of our viewers will be happy to have their Fridays uh, free. Um, all right. Well, uh, if you liked the show, like the show. Excellent. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, enjoy your few weeks off. <laughs>